So the answer is the first one. The property that we need is to provide this collision resistance property. All of these provide the compression needed. We're taking a large input X that could be any size, turning it into the size of one block. The other three don't provide the collision resistance we need. So with counter mode, the value of the last output block is the encryption of the last block in the message XORed with the counter value and the nonce. And that doesn't depend on any other blocks in the message. It only depends on the last block. It depends on the length, the number of blocks before that. But if we want to find that pair of values X and Y that hash to the same value, well, in this case, that's easy. We can change any of the previous blocks. For the other two, it's a little less clear to see that. The output does depend on all the input because we're XORing all those inputs into the output. But there are lots of things we could do that would still allow us to find collisions. And one example with ECB mode, well, we can just flip the messages. If we swap the first block of the message with the second block of the message, the XOR of all the output blocks will still be the same, since with ECB mode, these will encrypt to the same thing. With counter mode, the swap is not quite as simple. We'd have to adjust what's in the block to also adjust the change in the counter, but we could produce things that hash to the same value. So none of these would work. The first one is actually pretty close to what traditional hash functions used, and it's a construction known as the Merkle Damgard construction, which is quite similar to CVC mode encryption. Since it's a hash, we don't need a secret key. We can use the same key for each step, so we could select the key being zero. There's some subtleties to make this work as a hash function. And in fact, there's a lot of controversy today about how well hash functions work. The ones that were considered the standard until recently was a hash function known as SHA-1. This was a standard accepted by NIST. And people have found ways to find collisions in SHA-1. There is an ongoing competition to select a new standard hash to find a replacement, to find a hash function that is closer to achieving these properties. And it's expected that the winner will be announced in 2012. There are five finalists currently under consideration. We're not going to look any more in detail at how to construct a modern hash function. Instead, we're going to assume that we have an ideal one, 